I believe a combination of biased translations due to bad dogma has led most Christians to misunderstand the Jewish charge against Jesus in John 10 verse 33. Now most translations have the Jews saying to Jesus, we're not stoning you for any good work, but for blasphemy because you, a mere man, claim to be God. A New Testament Greek scholar called Bill Mounds says the Jewish response shows clearly that Jesus was making a claim to be God, the God, Yahweh. There's no question that Jesus and his followers claimed that Jesus was God. Well, I do beg to differ and question whether Jesus was capital G God, the God, Yahweh. Especially when Jews would never dream to accuse anyone of claiming to be, let alone making themselves the one God of Israel. Their only response would have been simply to ignore such a person. Some well-known modern-day Trinitarian scholars seem to agree. For example, the British Methodist minister C.K. Barrett admitted that it's simply intolerable that Jesus should be made to say, I am God, the supreme God of the Old Testament, and being God, I do as I am told, and I am God, and I'm here because someone sent me. Another Trinitarian, the Anglican cleric and scholar R.T. Franz, was right to note that this sort of talk as a public relations exercise would have been a guaranteed disaster. Now, what exactly did the Jews charge Jesus with then in John 10, verse 33? Dr. James McGrath, yet another Trinitarian scholar, writes that Jesus' real conflict with the Jews throughout the Gospel of John did not concern a supposed abandonment of Jewish monotheism. Rather, the issue is whether Jesus is an agent carrying out God's will and purposes, or a blasphemer who's seeking glory and power for himself in a manner that detracts from the glory due to the only God. So the real issue, according to Dr. McGrath, is not that Jesus is claiming equality with God per se, but whether or not this lowly man from Nazareth was just another upstart, one of a number of messianic pretenders and glory seekers to appear on the scene during this period of Jewish history. Now the Jews knew full well that God could and did appoint personal agents with his full authority people like Moses, the judges of Israel, and even the prophets. Now, we know that scripture calls these people God, that is lowercase g. So we have Moses called God at least twice, as we know in the book of Exodus, and the judges of, I of Israel are called gods, including in Exodus 22 and the famous Psalm Now, before 82. I finish a little teen, for example, when, he's when Jesus is praying for believers. And then he goes on, if I am not doing the works of my father, then do not believe me. But if I do them, even though you do not believe me, believe the works that you may know and understand. Listen to this, that the father is in me and I am in the father. Now, this last saying is clearly an allusion to the well-known Jewish principle of the time of the legal system known as agency, which stated that the one sent by a man is as the man himself. That the A God translation best suits this story in John 10 is supported by other, guess what, notable Trinitarians. So you have a translator's handbook of the Gospel of John that says purely on the basis of the Greek text, therefore, it is possible to translate this verse as a God as the New English Bible does, rather than to translate capital G, God. The New International Dictionary of New Testament Theology. The reason why judges are called gods in Psalm 82 is that they have the office of administering God's judgment as sons of the Most High. Hence, they're, they're sons of God as well. In context of the psalm, the men in question have failed to do this in John 10. In trying to arrest Jesus and in disregarding the testimony of his works, the Jews were judging unjustly like the judges of Psalm 82. On the other hand, Jesus fulfilled the role of a true judge as a little g, God, and obviously as the son of the Most High. Yet, as we sadly know, most of his fellow Jews rejected Jesus, not only as a legitimate prophet or agent of God, 
that is a lowercase g God, but more importantly as their promised Messiah, the unique Son of the Most High. Hence, in John 19, 7, the Jewish leaders say to Pilate, We have a law, and according to our law, he ought to die because he made himself Son of God. 